Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here to Atlanta Motor Speedway for the fourth race of the season, the third season of the NCAA Duracell Cup Series. What a start to the year we've had so far. Carson Gum winning the Daytona 500. Dylan Young getting his second career win, winning at uh, Manassas. And last week, I, I kind of expected, would there be nine rookies this season, that it would be early on that we'd have a rookie go to victory lane. But how about Jacob Thibodeau? picking up his first career win as a rookie in only the third race of the season at Las Vegas. We head into today's race, though, with those three drivers currently trying to secure themselves a spot in the playoffs, keep themselves up in the top 20 in points right now. Um, I'm sorry, actually the top uh, 30 in points, I should say. And right now, all three of them currently are situated there. Dylan Young, the points leader, Carson Gum, seventh. And with his win last week, Thibodeau now up to 20th question is here at Atlanta will somebody else join them uh, the odds are very much in favor of another different winner going to victory lane and we've got a lot of very plausible candidates up towards the front of the field here you've got Benny Watson lined up on the pole position Benny's been off to a really good start here this season three top tens in the first three races he's second in the points coming to this as well only nine points back behind Dylan Young average finishing position on the year so far of eighth place so the consistency is definitely there we just gotta see if he can close out the deal with a win here today alongside him is Ryan Brommer now Brommer finished second in the points last year this season in the first three races only one top 10 but he is sixth in the points so even though he hasn't finished in the top 10 in all three races he's finished right around the uh, outside the top 10 in the two races he did not finish inside the top 10 so been a good start to his season as well could have back-to-back -back races where a rookie goes to victory lane Phil Parker is going to line up in the third spot Phil coming into this one currently situated 27th in the point standings and alongside of him is Jack Mitchell Mitchell's looking for his first career win still of the Duracell Cup Series and he comes into this race currently 19th in points after a solid outing last week at Las Vegas moved him up 10 spots in the standings time to go down trackside get those most famous words in motorsports here at the Atlanta Motor Speedway drivers Start your engines! It's going to be 65 laps of racing here today at Atlanta, the D-shaped mile-and-a-half racetrack. Check down in the description below for your official starting lineup for today's event. Give you a top 10, the point standings coming into this race. Dylan Young, our winner from Manassas, is your current points leader. He holds a nine-point advantage, as we mentioned, over Benny Watson, who currently is second. William Brock, Atlanta native, would love to win here in front of his home crowd. He's third in the points, 15 points back. Levi McIntyre is currently in fourth. He's 20 points back. Fifth is Kyle Matthews. Best start he's had to the season in a while. He is 22 points back. Ryan Brommer, as I mentioned, sixth in the standings, 24 points back. Our Daytona 500 winner, Carson Gum, is seventh. He's 26 points out. Defending champion Ryan Acosta now peaks up into the top 10 in 8th. He's 28 points out. Vince Almriego in 9th. He's 29 points back. And 30 points back in 10th is Matt Haas, who will be starting from the outside of row 3 in the 6th position. Last week's winner, Jacob Thibodeau, you can see there, starting up towards the front. Inside the top 5 in 5th. Could he get back-to-back -back victories? We'll have to wait and see as Benny Watson and Ryan Brommer will lead them down into the restart zone we go green flags in the air let's roll at Atlanta already gonna be three wide potentially up here towards the front Jack Mitchell going to back out of that as looks like he, Ryan Brommer, and Phil Parker are all going to go three wide. They're now all the double wide there through three and four. Benny Watson will lead the first lap, but here comes Phil Parker to the inside. Phil's going to take the lead. It's Nathan Hudson there in the 24, pushing him to the front, and now Hudson going for the spot. Nope. 
He's going to get stuck in the middle three wide. Here comes Matthew Rodriguez for the lead. And he's getting pushed there by Keith Batson. Look at them, three by three by three all the way through the field here. Rodriguez will get the lap led. As now he has to give way to Keith Batson. He's got Nathan Orman behind him. Cole Deaver, one of two Georgia natives. We mentioned William Brock already. Deaver is another. Would love to win in front of his home crowd here. And there is former Daytona 500 winner Carter Friesen in the 37. Carter comes into this race 28th in the points. He's made the playoffs the past two seasons. So you, got, you kind of get the feeling that uh, this team at any moment is going to get their season turned around. James Qualls right behind him in the 54. Qualls had a great run last week at Las Vegas. Up in the 25th position in the standings because of that. And Kyle Matthews. If we include today's race, he would be on a 36 race winless streak. Because next week we're going to ISM Raceway, which is the location last season of his last Duracell Cup Series victory. Looks like that inside line is definitely the faster way around the racetrack. And oh, we nearly had a wreck right there. Levi trying to make the move on Kyle Matthews. Kyle was going to try and block him and Levi wasn't going to lift. That was close. That's one of those heart jumps into your throat moments. Levi led the lap though, but not for long. Cole Baker now to the inside line. Followed by Charles Sanford, Jordan Lopez there. Marcus Sachi, and there's William Brock. First time today we've seen him up inside of the top 10. Lopez will go to the race lead. We'll have to see if there's a pattern here because in the first three races it's been Chevy Ford Chevy in terms of wins. So does that mean that it's time for a Ford to go to the back to victory lane to counter the Chevrolet bow ties? We've yet to see a Toyota win this season, yet to see a Dodge win this season. Right now the highest running Dodge is Ryan Brommer who started on the outside of the front row. He is currently battling for the sixth position with Marcus Sachi. Charles Belding, rookie out of Backmarker Motorsports, now up here inside of the top five, 35th in points coming into this one, and now he's going to get passed by our Manassas winner, Dylan Young, who would love to become the first two-time winner on the season. The last two races at Atlanta have been won by drivers that are in the field here today. Carson Gum, the defending winner back in season two, and you're looking at the inaugural Atlanta winner, Jesse Turner, taking the checkered flags here back in season one. Turner coming into this race. Finds himself 30th in the point standings. And Jesse's been in the playoffs the last two seasons. Last year was looking like it was a little bit in doubt whether he was going to make it or not, but he ended up getting that victory at the road course of Watkins Glen, which locked him into the playoffs nearing the end of the season. It was with about uh, four races remaining in the regular season. Ryan Acosta, he wants to defend his championship. He now goes to the race lead, but a good start to the season for the defending champion. Eighth in the stands coming into this one. Had a great run last week at Las Vegas, which jumped him up nine spots in the standings. Jacob Thibodeau, obviously, with his victory, moved up the most in points with 18 positions gained. Jordan Lopez jumped up 12 spots to 14th, and then you had Ryan Acosta, Kyle Matthews, who jumped up nine. And jumping up eight spots was Nathan Ormond of other drivers that gained a lot of points last week with good finishes. Cole Baker, he jumped up 11 spots. Jack Mitchell up 10. Charles Sanford jumped up 13 from 36th to 23rd. And James Qualls also jumped up 10 spots in the standings as the defending winner of this race is now going to go to the race. They don't got trouble in the back. That's Mitchell Collins around. Last week's winner, Jacob Thibodeau, was facing the wrong way as well. Trouble out of turn two and onto the back straightaway. is going to bring out the first yellow of the day here at Atlanta on lap 12 as Carson Gum, the defending winner, is going to lead us to our first caution. That 
started with Mitchell Collins in the 22. And then they just started bouncing off each other. I know Thibodeau was involved, and they're still wrecking! That's Cole Deaver, Jordan Lopez, Vince Elmriego up into the wall, and Collins is up and over! Austin LaPlante's got some damage now as they're all stacking up. Collins is still on his roof. Turner's got damage. McIntyre, Mills. Someone up there's got their hood crunched up that I can't make out. Looks like James Qualls, Charles Sanford, Ryan Brommer, Thibodeau, Trey Wright, Marcus Sachi, Nathan Norman. They've all got damage as Matthew Rodriguez is on pit lane in the 57. And we've got some varying strategies here as Phil Parker and just about everybody else is going to come to pit road. Carson Gum and the 19 is going to stay out. Now remember, Carson is up in the top 10 in points. He also has a win in the bank with the Daytona 500 victory. So at this point, that team is looking to maybe utilize some kind of outside-the-box strategy to maybe get a second victory to solidify themselves a spot in the playoffs. But that wreck over in turn two under caution was really strange. I don't know if they were crowding each other or what, but that left a lot of drivers with damage now as a result. The initial contact started with Mitchell Collins, and now Collins, as we saw, upside down. As William Brock going to win the battle off of Pitt Road in the, in the uh, 88. Followed by Ryan Butcher, Carter Friesen, Ryan Acosta. So Zach Rogers and Patrick Smith were the next two off Pitt Lane. Caution is out for the first time here today. Carson Gum is leading... I don't know if maybe he'll come to pit road this time or something. Maybe he thinks this is going to go into a fuel strategy race. He wants to get that extra lap of fuel. But we're going to go back and see what happened to bring out the caution for the first time here today at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Incident bringing out the caution and then an incident taking place in the exact same spot under the yellow flag. We've seen them three wide all the way through the field here in the first 12 laps, but look at them four wide. That is, I think, Friesen on the bottom, Matthew Rodriguez and Jacob Thibodeau in the middle, Marcus Sachi up top, and there's where the contact is, as Rodriguez kind of crowded Thibodeau up the track. Nor for Marcus Sachi to go. Austin Colano is going to get a piece of it there. Kyle Matthews. Mitchell Collins gets into Cole Baker, but that kind of allows him to save it. There's where James Qualls gets involved. Left side of screen, he gets into Matthew Rodriguez. Nathan Orman goes down and hits the inside wall. Matt Rod is still spinning down towards the apron in turn three. Looks like Nathan Orman and Jacob Thibodeau split him. And there's the 21 of Marcus Sachi. Now something else happens while we're under pacing. They've taken the caution at this point. Now, I'm trying to think of who was, I think it was uh, Cole Deaver, was involved in the incident up in turn two here under pacing. Now, what happens here? Let's see if someone crowds somebody. It looks like Lopez is coming down, and he might have gotten down and into Cole Deaver, caused the car to turn up the track, and there's Vince Almriego getting collected as well. And then these guys here just never start slowing down. Here's where Cole Baker gets involved. There's Collins again. I think it's right there. He's going to get hit in the passenger side door by Austin Colano. That's what flips over his Ford. Kyle Matthews, Levi McIntyre, Jessica Shelton, Austin LaPlante all back there. And I think they're all just going to start stacking in. They just never slow up. And you look back there at Qualls, Gardner, Brommer, Thibodeau, they've got plenty of time to react and slow down, and they don't. Everyone just stacks up on that outside line. Now, it looks like Shelton and Cody Lamas, as well as Michael Norman, might have gotten through with minimal to no damage. I think they may have slowed up in time. Now, there's a little bit of damage on the front of Shelton's Chevrolet, and I think Cody might actually have some rear-end damage because you can see the front buckle on the 47 of Jesse Turner. So my assumption is he ran to the back of Lamas. But you see further back there, there's Mills, there's Trey Wright, Thibodeau, Ormond, Sanfer, Brummer. They all didn't slow up. Looks like Adam Garcia and Austin LaPlante might have gotten through pretty well without very much damage, if any. I think Garcia may have missed the whole thing. LaPlante may have been running to the back of, but I don't really see a whole lot of damage sustained on his National Guard Chevrolet either. 
But that is what brought out the caution and what happened under the caution for the first time here today at Atlanta. Let's go back for the green. Green flag just came back out, so we got back here just in time. Green flag coming out on lap 17 of 65. Carson Gubb did not pit at all during that caution, so this will definitely put him off the pit sequence. Don't know if these drivers are going to have to pit again or not. If they are, Carson Gunn may have to only pit in this race once, depending on when he makes that green flag pit stop. So let's take a look and see who's out of the race after the incidents we just saw on back-to-back -back laps over in turn two. Those drivers would include Trey Wright, James Qualls, Ryan Brommert, Last week's winner, Jacob Thibodeau, Nathan Ormond, Mitchell Collins, and Matthew Rodriguez. Driver, this is probably going to hit the most in the standings coming into this one. Probably would be uh, Jacob Thibodeau coming into this one, 20th in the point standings. It's going to drop him down close to maybe that danger zone of 30th in the standings. And remember, if he does not finish out the regular season inside the top 30, that win does not count towards a playoff spot. Now with Ryan Brommer out of the race, the only dodge left in the field is Zach Rogers. Saw him going for the lead there on Ryan Acosta. He got stuck to the middle. Here comes Matt Haas to the bottom. And now Charles Belding going to make a move three wide for the top position. Now becomes double wide as Carson Gum in that middle line kind of backs out. Four wide, uh-oh. That's Nathan Hudson, Michael Norman, Zach Rogers, and Keith Batson. They're still bouncing off each other there on the back straightaway. And somehow four wide worked. Didn't work on the last time they attempted it. That's what brought out our only caution up to this point. Up towards the front there, how about rookie Aaron Macklin? He's in that third position right behind Ryan Butcher looking for the top spot. Aaron comes into this race 18th in the point standings. You know, it's interesting to see how certain rookies have actually done really well to start out the year here in their first three races. Macklin's one of those. He's in the top 20 in points, 18th in the standings. We talked about Thibodeau, of course, with his win. Cole Deaver, he's up in the 15th in points coming into this. Patrick Smith, currently in 13th. So there's been some rookies that have done really well here to start the season but you look at a rookie right here that we're focused on the 24 of Nathan Hudson that's the flip side of rookies that are struggling here in the first three races Hudson's 31st in points Nathan Orman 29th Phil Parker 27th Charles Belding in 35th LaPlante gonna go to the race lead in the 48 car Saw him do a pretty good job of avoiding not only the initial wreck, but also that stack up under caution. Now he's up front. And one thing now we should, uh, and we could kind of keep an eye on that might come into play in this race, especially with the front pack as bunched up as it's been all race long, is drivers that were involved in the wreck that have continued on but may not necessarily be up to speed could be some moving chicanes here in lap traffic. As this race goes on, I'm hearing some idling engines already. One of those is Kyle Matthews, fifth in the points coming to this. He's still in the lead lap in 33rd position, just trying to soldier on. Austin Colano in the 81 car. No front, hardly any rear end. Car looks like a late model machine here. Jesse Turner, Charles Sanford there. 30th and 31st where they're both running. Levi McIntyre, no front. Marcus Sachi's got a lot of rear end damage. Cole Baker. The car looks relatively clean. They may have uh, been able to beat down the hood, but that car is still not running up to speed. Then you got a little group back here. Adam Garcia, Cody Lamas, Johnny Gardner, Jose Mills, Jordan Lopez. Oh, I think we had a wreck. Yes, we do. But no caution as they save it. That was Patrick Smith up into the wall. Zach Rogers on the apron, and somehow they all kept it going. I think we're still green. Michael Norman's got some damage now on the left side of his machine as a result, but yeah, we're still green. Wow. And I thought maybe that might be due to slower traffic, but they've just now caught Kyle Matthews, so no, that had absolutely nothing to do with it. 
Zach Rogers, because of all this, has inherited the race lead over Phil Parker, Ryan Butcher, Carter Fries, and Aaron Macklin. And look at this. Look at the run you can get on the back straightaway. Zach Rogers looked like he was sitting still. Ryan Butcher's gonna get the race lead now away from Carter Friesen with a little bit of help there from Colano. Now we're gonna be right back in just a minute after this commercial break from Atlanta. Welcome back to Atlanta Motor Speedway. You didn't miss a thing, maybe about a lap and a half. Ryan Butcher continues to show the way. Carter Friesen second. Third place Aaron Macklin, Matt Haas in fourth. Fifth is Keith Batson, so both of the KAB Racing Enterprises cars are now up here towards the front. Nathan Hudson currently runs in sixth. Benny Watson, the pole sitter, up here in seventh, trying to go four for four in top tens to start out the season. Vincent Riego, despite the damage he sustained in our only caution to date, he is still up here. Inside the top 10 and 8th, Dylan Young right now is in ninth with Zach Rogers completing your top 10. We're about to catch some more traffic, which I believe are going to be Charles Sanford and Jesse Turner in a few moments. Well, you can add Levi McIntyre to that mix as well. This is actually a battle for position going on right now, 29th, 30th, and 31st. And of course, for some of these guys here, they're trying to keep themselves up there in points. Charles Sanford came off a great run last week and gained spots in the standings up to 23rd. Levi McIntyre coming into this one currently fourth in points. And Jesse Turner right now 30th in the standings just trying to gain every point he can to keep himself in the top 30 in the standings. As Keith Batson now out in front in the 39 car. And one thing that I've noticed is Carson Gum and the 19 has not come to pit road yet. Now what we're gonna have to do is gauge off the 19 car. When the caution came out on lap 12, Carson Gum was the only one that did not pit. When he hits pit road, we're gonna have to calculate in about maybe 12 laps past that, the other drivers will may ha maybe have to make green flag pit stops. And I think Carson might be pitting this time. So here he comes. So if the calculations are correct and Carson Gum has run it completely dry here on lap 34, everybody else is going to have to come to pit road somewhere between laps 46 to 48, which may end up having them be able to go the rest of the way. I mean, Carson Gum was able to make it 34 laps, so this is an interesting strategy. I kind of like it on the part of Carson Gum. He's only having to make one pit stop. He stayed out, he kept track position. He's kept himself up in this lead pack, which also keeps him ahead of any incidents that could take place. Remember that 19 car is going for wins now. He's already got a victory in the Daytona 500. Now if he can get a second victory here today at Atlanta, that would really all but confirm him a spot in the playoffs, providing he stays in the top 30 in the standings. And here we go, slow traffic. McIntyre, Sanford, and Turner have been reeled in, and we've got a battle for the lead. Dylan Young trying to get by fellow Ford Mustang Levi McIntyre. He will. He'll go to the front. Dylan Young's another driver that's looking for yet another victory to lock himself up a playoff spot after winning at Manassas, although he and Carson Gum, the first two winners of the season, are on extremely different varying strategies. Now, I think Carson Gum's going to lose a lap as a result of this. He's currently in 33rd. And, yes, he is one lap down. Now, what he has to make sure he does is that he only stays one lap down so that when these drivers come to pit road, he'll be able to cycle back around on the lead lap. The one thing I'd be a little concerned about, though, is we've clearly seen, especially on the back straightaway, with drivers being able to get runs, that the draft has been very important here today. Carson Gum is running 183 by himself. This lead group's running about 186, 187. Actually, they're topping at 188 on the straightaway, so they're gaining 5 miles per hour each straightaway on the 19 car. Now, Carson's going to catch Polano and Matthews. If he can get around them, that's going to give them a little bit of a buffer back to Jack Mitchell, who's currently leading this race. 
still a number of drivers who have started every single race here in the Duracell Cup Series that have not gone to victory lane. I'm seeing some candidates up here towards the front. Mitchell is one of them. Adam Garcia's back there in the 12. So don't count some of these guys out. They still want to find victory lane. Vince Almriego, the 42, we saw up here inside the top 10. He's right now back outside the top 10 just a bit. And he's another driver that would fit that as I think someone that might be coming to pit road here from this lead pack. And that's the 8, 88 of William Brock. Now, this is interesting because remember, Brock won the battle off pit road when they all came to pit lane under the last caution. They may not have gotten that car full of fuel. And maybe it was a fuel strategy call that got him up there towards the front as well. Marcus Sachi is in as well. Kyle Matthews. See if anybody else can hit pit road. Yep, Carter Friesen and the 37 is in. Along with the pole sitter, Benny Watson. So now the pit strategy begins. Now I believe that all these drivers... When they make this pit stop, it will be their last. They will be good to go on fuel. Because everybody here all pitted back on lap 12. So we've run 29 laps. And when they hit the line, we're going to be at 20, uh, 24 laps to go, I believe. So they should be good to go on fuel if they get it completely full on these pit stops. It's also going to break the field up quite a bit too though, so it'll be very interesting to see who's got the better car as far as single car speed to be able to start making passes. Got the front 10, 11, 12 cars all single file right now, but Ryan Butcher out in front showing the way. Butcher coming into this 134th in the standings, boy he really would love to find victory lane after what's been a struggling first three races. And you think about Auto Junction Racing last season. Both of their drivers found victory lane, Butcher and, at the time, rookie. Uh, yeah, who was the rookie? All of a sudden, I've lost it. Oh, Casey Nanico, that's who it was in the 77. And they also, uh, Auto Junction Racing had a good start to the season at Daytona. Both of their Toyota Camrys finished up inside of the top five. But since then, Patrick Smith's faded outside of the top 10 and 13th, and as mentioned, Ryan Butcher down to 34th. He dropped 12 spots in the standings after last week's race at Las Vegas. It looks like we got some drivers pitting. Jack Mitchell's going to give up second. Belding is in, along with... Aaron Macklin, Zach Rogers, trying to see them all back there. I believe that's Patrick Smith in the 77. Cole Deaver back there as well. Cody Lamas, Ryan Acosta, Jessica Shelton, Adam Garcia. Along with the 98 of Jose Mills. They've all pitted. Looks like Michael Norman as well in the 18. And now the race leader is in. A little earlier than I expected these drivers to be hitting pit road. I thought they'd be pinned around lap 46, but these guys are in at lap 45. That turns the race lead over to Keith Batson in the 39. So now it's all about, for these guys, who's going to stay out the longest? Does that gain you anything to stay out longer? There's Batson in the 39. Looks like he indicating to Jesse Turner behind him that he's coming to pit road this time by. And I believe that's going to be it of the drivers that have to pit. Belding was able to get off pit road ahead of Jack Mitchell. So is he going to cycle around to the race lead? Charles Belding trying to make it back-to-back -back races where a driver with yellow rookie stripes goes to victory lane. We also have to find out where Carson Gum cycles around in all of this in the 19. Now it looks like a couple cars are going to get out ahead of Belding here. Vince Almriego and Ryan Butcher. So I'm assuming Ryan Butcher is going to cycle back out to the race lead. Pretty sure he was the leader when the uh, green flag pit stops began. This I think is an exchange for second. 
We've actually got Ryan Butcher scored in second place. There's Keith Batson, who's right now being scored the leader, and we're about to see a battle for the lead now between himself and Butcher in the 78. Belding closing quickly, so all of a sudden it turns into a battle for second place. Jack Mitchell closing in quick as well, and just like that, we got five, maybe six cars up here battling for the lead again. After the cycle of green flag pit stops, if you include rookie Aaron Macklin. Butcher is going to go to the lead. You got these front six. When you go back to seventh place, it's where you find Dylan Young, pole sitter Benny Watson, Patrick Smith, Carter Friesen, William Brock, Cody Lamas, Michael Norman. They're all still up here in this hunt, and they could definitely uh, catch up. Actually, no, uh, correction. Michael Norman is actually a lap down in 26th, so he is not up here inside the top 10. All right now you got LaPlante there in 13th. 14th place currently is Zach Rogers. 15th was Shelton, 16th Matt Haas, 17th Jordan Lopez. 18th Johnny Gardner, 19th Nathan Hudson, and right now in the top 20 is Adam Garcia. 21st just changed hands, that's Phil Parker. Now he's under fire as Carson Gum's going to try and take that spot. So Carson Gum, the uh, staying out under our only caution up to this point, did not help him. He came to pit road by himself, did not come out with anybody, so his lap times were not as good under the green flag run after he pitted. He now finds himself back in 21st. Those are Daytona 500 winners, so Phil Parker drops back to 22nd. Cole Devers 23rd, Jordan or Jose Mills rather in uh, 24th. And I believe the last car on the lead lap right there. Defending champion Ryan Acosta in 25th place and he's about to go a lap down. As Keith Batson looks to take the lead away from Charles Belding. That second group caught up to the first group. See Dylan Young, William Brock, Cody Lamas, they were all back in the second group and they've caught up so we've got a lot of drivers up here in the hunt for this victory now as Keith Batson out in front, hasn't won since Richmond of season one. And Batson comes into this race currently 26th in the standings too, so he could certainly use a win after not getting off to that great a start this year. Vincent Mariego, we already documented earlier, he's still looking for his first career win. William Brock there in the 88 would love to win in front of his home crowd. And how about the rookie Patrick Smith? Up the inside, he's gonna move to second. Carter Friesen right there with him in the 37. Oh, they're four wide. They're four wide there, that's Butcher. Norman, Belding and Brock, and they're gonna wreck, there they go to the wall. Up and over goes Ryan Butcher. Belding is collected as well. Vince Almriego may have gotten a piece. William Brock got a piece of it as well. The hood was buckled up on his machine as Butcher's gonna come back up the racetrack. Oh, look out! He's gonna come back down to rest on the apron of turn three. That was a close call, and they're still wrecking out of four! Garcia, Lopez, Hudson, Sachi all up into the wall. And Jose Mills comes flying in and ran to the back of somebody hard. Might have been Marcus Sachi, because he is smoking now. And I believe Johnny Gardner got a piece of this turn for instance as well. We got more drivers coming in full speed. It was Kalano, Turner, and McIntyre, but they all got through. There's rookie Nathan Hudson. A lot of damage on the Allegiant Air Chevrolet. Adam Garcia all crunched up now. And I'm pretty certain if we look, we'll see damage on the 14 of Johnny Gardner there. He's got left and right side damage. I think he had that rear end damage from the earlier incident. And there's Michael Norman who was involved in the, the uh, four wide situation along with Ryan Butcher. They're now on pit road. Charles Belding there as well. And both Belding and Butcher were up at the front and led a couple of laps not too long ago. 21 car trying to get back to pit road. Caution is out. This will definitely now allow all these drivers to make it the rest of the way on fuel. They were pretty much good to go anyways, but uh, now with having a couple of pace laps here and with the restart happening with less than 10 to go, they will be good to go to the finish. Let's go back and see what happened to bring out the initial caution four wide again, this time in turns one and two, and then a wreck out of turn four coming back to the caution flag as Keith Batson shows the way here at Atlanta. 
We saw this happen and going into turn one, and they've been one for two here today in making four wide work. Well, this makes it one for three. As Ryan Butcher, I guess Michael Norman was a little bit off the pace. We already knew he was off the lead lap. And Ryan Butcher had a run, went way down to make the move on Michael Norman, and they just crowd each other and nowhere for Charles Belding to go. It looked like William Brock had done a pretty good job backing out of that, so I thought they might get through it safely because it was three wide by the time they started leaning on each other, but they just didn't even give each other enough room. See Michael Norman up there against the wall. William Brock did indeed get a piece in the 88. You can see him up on the left side of the screen. Vince Amriego got a little piece of it, but I don't know how much. And look at Austin LaPlante right between the upside down 78 and that inside wall. And I thought Ryan Butcher was going to come back up the racetrack here. I think it's the 21 of Marcus Sachi that he almost gets hit by right here. Right there. That was close. But I think it's that group that something happens here. Let's watch what happens with these guys. Sachi's got his tires down the apron. No, it happens further up. Maybe with the 12 of Adam Garcia. Does he get run into the back of by maybe Johnny Gardner? Oh, yeah. Gardner hooked him in the right rear quarter panel. Sent him up into the wall. Nowhere for Jordan Lopez to go. There's LaPlante collected. Charles Sanford goes around the outside, but he doesn't pick up spots because he was on the uh, lap down mark at that point. Look at Carson Gum and Phil Parker split the gap. They get through. Cole Baker down on the apron gets through. Cole Deaver. Yikes. Close call for him, and then, oh, Jose Mills never lifted. Thought he could squeeze between the wall and Marcus Sachi. No such luck. And his uh, IK9.com Ford Mustang all crunched up as well. That's uh, two of the Blue Oval Automotive cars involved. As a matter of fact, I think all four of the Blue Oval Automotive machines have been involved in wrecks today. Levi McIntyre's off the lead lap. Trey Wright's out of the race. And you see there the caution flag waving. These drivers were coming back to receive the caution and wrecked before they even got to the start-finish line after the yellow flag was already waving. Let's go back and get ready for the restart, which will be with less than 10 laps to go. When we get the green flag, there will be eight laps remaining in this race. Three more drivers out of the event after what we just saw take place. They include Marcus Sachi, Ryan Butcher, and Jose Mills. Out of those drivers, the one that probably will take the biggest hit would probably, well, to be honest, none of those three were really running that well in the point standings. Well, I guess Jose Mills was. Yeah, he was 11th in points. That's really going to kill him. I'll drop him probably outside of the top 15. Ryan Butcher was looking like he was going to get his best finish so far this year, and he's going to be dropping in the stands. He was 34th in points coming into this. And Marcus Sachi, boy. His average finishing position so far this season is around 33rd place. Dead last in the points coming into this one. So that's a driver and a team that could ill afford another poor result here. Only four races into the season as the green flag is back in the air. It's Keith Batson, Carter Friesen, Cody Lamas, Patrick Smith, Dylan Young, Benny Watson, Jack Mitchell, Aaron Macklin, Vince Almriego, and Matt Haas. And all of them were lined up nose to tail with no lap traffic in between them with less than 10 to go. Lap traffic does intermingle single file with the lead lap cars. Actually, I think there was one lap down car in between all of them. That was Ryan Acosta in the 10, but I think he was up to speed. Almost had a bit of contact right there. Cody Lamas got awfully close to Carter Friesen's left rear quarter panel. As Keith Batson trying to block every lane he can. And how about Benny Watson? Started on the pole, faded back a little bit near the midway point of this race. And now he's back up here at the front yet again, trying to go coast to coast at Atlanta. With Ryan Butcher out of the race, it's now on the shoulders of Patrick Smith to get Auto Junction Racing a victory here today. And he's been doing a heck of a job just outside the top 10, now up in the top three. And how about the second entry out of KB Racing Enterprises? Aaron Macklin, both of their Ford Mustangs right now up inside of the top four. The lead battle is on. Benny Watson to the bottom. He'll have the runoff turn two and probably clear Keith Batson. As we've got about nine cars, I think, up in this lead group. How about Jessica Shelton up in the top ten all of a sudden there? Making the move on Jack Mitchell. That's for eighth. 
Cody Lamas was a two-time winner last season. He's up here inside the top five now. At the line when they just hit, it was five laps to go. They're pretty spread out here at the front. Let's look towards the back, make sure that everything is at least relatively calm so that way we don't see another caution. How about Carson Gum? That caution was a big break for him, bunched everybody else back up. He just made a move on Phil Parker for 12, so he's trying to close in on a top 10 finish. Looks like everything's pretty well spread out here amongst the entire field. Leader is coming out of turn two right now. This group with Nathan Hudson, Charles Bell, and Adam Garcia are only about maybe three quarters of a straightaway ahead. They may only be half a straightaway ahead now. They may come into play in the closing stages of this race. Oh, they will. They're going to get caught this lap as Dylan Young takes the lead. Carter Friesen looks three wide. They're going to be double wide ahead of him with those slower machines. This is not going to be good. Carter Friesen with contact with Dylan Young. He's going to get through with the race lead. The rest of the field is walled in behind Belding and Hudson. Now, is this too soon for Carter Friesen to have gotten away this quickly? They're still stuck behind them, though. Matt Haas is going to move to second because of this. Batson will move to third. Lamas and Mitchell to fourth and fifth. Look at Carson Gum on the bottom. Oh, they're going to wreck back here, too. Oh, Carson Gum has to pit. He couldn't make it on fuel. I thought he was only going to have to pit once. Apparently, he could not make it on fuel. Look at Dylan Young losing spots hand over fist. They're almost four wide back here with Shelton. Macklin and Dylan Young trying to get around Charles Belding. Two laps to go when they hit the line that time. This is the battle for second, and it's going on almost two seconds behind Carter Friesen. Friesen just wants to get to the white flag. I don't think these guys have enough time to get bunched up and reel the 37 back in. White flag is in the air. One more lap to go. For the past two seasons, Carter Friesen has made it into the playoffs. He wants to make it three for three. Think back to season one. Won the Daytona 500, but missed out on the championship by one point. He wants retribution. He wants that championship, but first he's got to make it into the playoffs. This is a great way to start. He'll make his way around the plant. Now has to deal with Michael Norman and William Brock, but he doesn't have anybody behind him challenging him for the win. Off turn four to the checkers. Carter Friesen's going to win at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Well, Carter Friesen, season one, Daytona 500 victory, but only one win on the season. Last year, only one win on the season. Getting a win this early, could Carter Friesen potentially be looking at his first multi-win season in the Duracell Cup Series? We'll have to wait and see, but boy, that race lead got cut down there on the final lap as well. Only six tenths he beat Keith Batson to the line by. Imagine if we had had another one or two laps. Friesen may not have been the one coming to the checkers. But boy, he made a gutsy move. A little bit of contact. I think it was with Dylan Young in a three-wide, almost four-wide situation to get by the lap machines or the slower machines. And that was the move that got him the win. A gutsy move, but it paid off in the end. Take a look at our full finishing results from this race. Carter Friesen coming into this race found himself in the 28th position in points, coming off a bad run last week at Las Vegas. So this is certainly going to help him in uh, picking up spots in the standings. And of course, he uh, joins Dylan Young, Carson Gum, and Jacob Thibodeau as a winner this season. Keith Batson so close again, but he's going to finish second. So a good run for him. Another driver that was struggling in the points that needed a good run. You got Phil Parker there, rookie of the race in third. So a great run for him. And you got Cody Lamas in fourth, Matt Haas brings it home fifth, Jack Mitchell sixth, Benny Watson seventh after starting on the pole. Patrick Smith's going to bring it home in eighth, so two rookies finish in the top ten here this week. Jordan Lopez, who if I'm not mistaken, got a little piece of that follow-up wreck on our last caution. He was able to battle back for ninth, and Jessica Shelton, who I'm pretty certain had a little bit of damage after the stack-up following the first caution, she was able to battle back for a top ten finish. So good runs for some drivers that had been involved in some of the wrecks that we had here today. Look a little bit further down there, and we had a total of 17 cars finished on the lead lap. Aaron Macklin there in 11th, 12th for Zach Rogers, Vince Elmriego 13th, Dylan Young in 14th. He was the one that I think really got held up the most behind those slower machines of uh, Charles Belden and Nathan Hudson. Cole Deaver brings it home in 15th, so a good run for the Georgia native. 
the rookie out of S3 Motorsports, Johnny Gardner, 16th, and last car to finish on the lead lap, the other Georgia native, William Brock, in the 88 17th place. The rest of the top 20 were all off the lead lap. Austin LaPlante, Cole Baker, and Ryan Acosta. You look on down through the remainder of the finishing results here, and you see the drivers that DNF'd Jose Mills, Ryan Butcher, Marcus Sachi, Trey Wright, James Qualls, Ryan Brommer, Jacob Thibodeau, last week's winner. That was a big one here today as well as Nathan Ormond, Mitchell Collins, and Matthew Rodriguez. We had a couple of drivers, Ryan Butcher and Mitchell Collins, who flipped over here at Atlanta, and you don't really see that happen uh, twice in a race. But with the high speeds here today, the hits were violent, and some of the hits were just right. The cars went up and over. But that's going to do it here from Atlanta Motor Speedway. Carter Friesen picks up the victory here. It's his third career Duracell Cup Series victory and first of Season 3. Hope you guys enjoyed today's race from Atlanta. If you did, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, become part of the crew today. We have shown you full finish results. These are what your point stands look like heading into next week's race as we go racing in the desert. We are at ISM, Phoenix International Raceway, whatever you want to call it. Brought about a really good race last year, and hopefully it will bring the same this year. It'll be interesting to see because last year we ran with the 2019 rules package. We're not running with the 2019 rules package this season, so we'll have to see if it's similar, a little bit different, maybe a little bit better. We're just going to have to wait and see. Till then, I've been Seth Cole. You've been watching a production of the SRA Offline Race Net Fest. We'll see you guys next week. So long from Atlanta. Oh, 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 oh,